Hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the eight. All right. Uh, we are on week uh, 45 straight of playing a game. <laughs> I don't know if it's that many. I don't think so yet, but we'll get there. <laughs> so, Cassie, March Madness uh, just ended, so yeah. we're going to play some M&M &M Madness. M&M, &M, March Madness. Nice. And we're now in April, so we're a little bit late on this, but it just ended. Yep. So I don't know why they call it March Madness when the true madness ends in April. Fair. Because there's probably more madness in, in, March. in March than there is. So here's the way that we play. Okay. Uh, I, I think of these games sometimes on the fly. I'm going <laughs> to open up your M&Ms. Okay. So it looks like I have, let's just make sure we're equal. I have 14 M&Ms. Do you have 14? 15. Oh, okay. So you're going to, let's just make sure. Well, that's, hey, <laughs> attorney out there. I know there's lawsuits called, I forget what the term is, but like when, when companies lie about how much is in a pack. Do they say how much is in a pack though? Um, they got to at some, at maybe on the math, on the big, big one. I don't know, but mine had 15 or 14. Cassie's had 15. So anybody want to file a lawsuit available? Here's a game we're playing. I'm playing Eminem &M basketball. <laughs> so okay. you, you turn that way. What? Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. We're going to go opposites and take in a shot. Whoever scores the most baskets wins. Where's the basket? Am Open I catching it in my mouth? <laughs> it's going to be so bad. Okay, ready? Yeah. So if Cassie catches this, she gets a point. I'm not going to catch it. Okay. <laughs> All right, now your turn. Oh, wow! <laughs> you came in to doing. clean these up. I'm doing. I was a great pass. Oh, that was. That was my bad. It's going to be really this. One one, good toss. <laughs> one one, good toss. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> that one's gonna be good, Hunter. <laughs> Slow. If you can, if you can freeze uh, that noise. <laughs> if you could not do that. That would be great. <laughs> Two two. Two two. Oh. <laughs> oh, don't make that noise. I went. <laughs>week, Cassie. <clears throat> All right, so our fantastic news this week is for brands that are heading to multi-unit this week. Um, there is a new article up on the site right now. We rounded up five insights that will help brands catch those big fish multi-unit franchisees, especially since they're a really sought after segment of local business owners. I know I create anger when I say these data points. I'm going to say them anyway. <laughs> if there's We'll, we'll be generous. I think there's like 300 franchisees. We'll say 500. 500 franchisees, 10% are willing to invest in another brand. Why? They know how much. If, if I'm Popeye's franchisee, mm -hmm. I know how much it costs to build it. I know what my labor is. I know what my food cost is. I know what my profitability is. I know how to manage my staff. I know how to operate the business. So to convince me to leave that brand, if I have growth opportunities, is hard. The real target 
for franchisors needs to be the one to ten unit guys who guys or girls who have got into franchising a little bit too late with the brand and their their market's already swallowed so they have to try with another brand okay so 10 percent are willing to invest in another brand i think that's a generous number that means there's 50 potential buyers in that room and of those if 10 percent are willing to buy this year that means there's five buyers in the room so if you look at that math even if you're generous and say 20 percent and 20 percent 100 and then and then 10 there's not a lot the reality is all these franchisors the franchisee already knows who you are clearly i mean in in a world of internet they know who you are they've already done their homework so they're not going to the show to discover what's out there in franchising mm -hmm. they're going to the show with a plan so if you just went through the show franchise brand and you didn't get any real true interest from multi-unit operators maybe if you stop by for your free swag and and you're you're gonna go home and you're gonna say well i had i had some major interest but they're they're long leads then you got to reposition what are what is the value that you're giving to these multi-unit franchisees are they the cream of the crop sure they have financial bandwidth they can invest in the brand uh they'll they'll they're more likely to hit their development schedule they're tough to get if i'm you i'm focused on the next franchisee that could be a 10 unit franchisee two to ten is my target range so am i going to the multi-unit show absolutely am i over investing in my positioning there absolutely not so read the article i i know i know sometimes when i write this stuff i disruptive or or he, he's going against the good old boy network screw that i'm here to give you good facts and mm -hmm. help you because in this climate when the economy is good there are less buyers and it's hard for you mr and mrs franchisor to get these deals done it's going to take doing the basics well and it's going to take reevaluating all, all the dollars that you're spending out there if you want to make it work fran of the week <laughs> yeah really all right i know what you are no it's good stuff it's an m&m on my butt <laughs> can that be can the, you, the new title of the, this <laughs> can, you, can you turn that into like a, a rap video can you auto to my voice about there's an m&m on my butt i appreciate you saying no <laughs> um all right know, i think that would be a good song like Kill Cassie. Which is a real song that I've learned. It's on here. Yeah. It was on Facebook Live. It wasn't on the 8, but <laughs> sorry. All right. Our friend Lovery this week. So we kicked off our franchise legal player issue on 1851. You, you, you better not be giving it to one attorney. I am giving it to an attorney. Like but one? I can give it to like multiple. All right. Listen, the rules of this is we're going to be doing a power ranking of all the attorneys yes. that submitted, which there were a lot. This way, when franchisors or franchisees are looking for the right franchise attorney, they're going to be able to see, based on the rankings, mm -hmm. of who has the most influence. And we're determining influence based on likes and shares. So you're going to play favorites right now and give it to the attorney? Here's what I'll do. I won't play favorites, and I will list out... Wait, can I guess who it was? You already know who it was. You uh, can guess, but I think that you know who it was. Does he have hair? No. <laughs> I mean, that's 90% of franchise attorneys. <laughs> But I also have one of the- Come on, I just gave a Fran funny. You did. I also have, for inspiration, it's a quote. So what I'll do is in the Fran Liberty section, what I think would be good each week is I'll list out all the people that aren't included in the Fran like so that, that everyone is linked to. I like that. And everyone's getting Great. that exposure. I, I know who it was this week though. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. But we are a non-biased publication. Therefore, I, sa I saved you. You did. Or I was actually thinking about I was thinking, yeah, I was thinking about it too, so that works. So <laughs> check out the... Uh, <laughs> Fran Leverty is all the attorneys. All the attorneys we love you from all. this week. Love you. All right, go ahead. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, that, that was helpful. For how much money, um, so obviously convenience and speed is really important for consumers right now, so Dunkin' Donuts is finding a new way to tap mm -hmm. into that, especially in that morning business segment, which makes up the majority of their shares. So they rolled out this new Dunkin' To Go's tiered breakfast setup to their <laughs> menu, sorry Starbs. Um, <laughs> so they have items that are featured for $2, $3, and $5, which makes it quick and easy for people to get it as well as value, which is something that consumers are looking for too. Duncan for the win, that brand's doing it right. From their commercials, to their positioning, mm -hmm. to saying we're Duncan, no longer donuts, even though people are still gonna eat the donuts. Love it, I love that brand. I do too. I run on Duncan. He says with the Starbucks cup sitting directly in, in the front mornings. Of him. Ben <laughs> is nodding in the background. <laughs> I, give, I give Ben my Duncan rewards every morning. 
He's the only one that appreciates it. I try giving it to Cassie. She's like, I don't want this. I go to Starbucks. Literally never said that, and I don't go to Starbucks She's like, either. I don't want this. I go to Gloria Jeans. I don't drink coffee, so. <laughs> All right, for another week. Um, consumers have said it loud and clear that convenience is really king these days. So in your column this week, you talk about in today's Grubhub-centric world, um, why it's important for marketers to really step their game up and make sure that they're getting ahead of that technology and working with it as opposed to getting left behind by it. The only thing I'll add is I find it interesting that the, the advantage for a restaurant is that Grubhub takes the blame when things go wrong. So the food's mm -hmm. cold, Grubhub is at fault. But also, you as a restaurant brand, you're putting uh, Grubhub in charge of delivering that product. So they, they determine how the experience with your restaurant exists outside of your four walls. So it, it's something that every brand needs to understand. How are we going to use that? How are we going to use Amazon? Mm -hmm. That is, uh, if Amazon's around, if, if Trump doesn't <laughs> close Amazon. Um, that was real news. Real news, yeah. Um, not political, I'm just, just factual. Um, but brands, you gotta you gotta jump on the bandwagon. You gotta figure out how you're gonna leverage this and understand that Grubhub has the largest menu. They are your competitor just as much as they are your uh, your help. So absolutely, read read the column. That column is fun. The multi unit one's better. Cool. All right, we're franching forward now. So there is a new competitor in the industry for Facebook Messenger. Apple rolled out Business Chat, which is a way that brands can communicate with customers via iMessage. I mean, you can even purchase things through Apple Pay in there. I think it's interesting that people are rolling this out. So far, the partners that they're working with are Home Depot, Marriott, and Wells Fargo. It'll be interesting to see what other brands adopt this, but especially as Facebook has to kind of slow things down a little bit involving bots, it'll be interesting to see if this picks up. The timing of this interesting? It is. Yeah. I'm not I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but the timing is <laughs> odd of when Facebook gets a uh, hacked and Apple launches a solution. Right. Just saying. <laughs> All right. I'm not I'm I'm not I'm not accusing. I'm just I'm just saying. It is interesting. Just saying. All right, our free and funny this week. So April Fool's Day was earlier this week. It's behind us now, but I'm linking out in the newsletter, so be on the look for it. Some of the best and worst April Fool's quote unquote pranks the brands pulled off on consumers. Some are better than others. In so my we roll, are we rolling these? We can put some of them up on the screen. Okay, great. What's your what was your favorite April Fool's joke that you ever done? That I've ever done? I've never really mm -hmm. been an April Fool's participant. My favorite one, and I use this many times. I, I decided to retire. I, I could be like Jordan or Jay-Z and come out of retirement someday. <laughs> but I've retired from April Fool's. I, I don't pull the jokes anymore. Uh, I did have a favorite. Is there a problem? No. Nope. This is why she needs to be mic'd up. I would, I would go. I went to co-worker. I said, this pet magazine called for you. They said it's urgent. They want to put our, one of our pet franchises on the cover. Please call them back immediately. His name is Mr. L-Y-O-N. I gave the phone number for the Atlanta Zoo. Oh, I think that's a funny one. That is funny. So they call the zoo and they ask for Mr. Lion. That's funny. <laughs> on April I Fools. could see it like as soon as it would come I out of my mouth, done being like, "Mr. Mr. B A Y E R." So, like, is Mr. Bear there? <clears throat> nice. I, I, was, I yeah. thought that would have got a better. <laughs> I mean, that's funny. I feel like I'm just sympathizing with the people that made those calls in the past. <laughs> Why? I mean, it's I hysterical. Know. It is funny. All right. I once pranked Dan Doolin at Buffalo Wings and Rings <laughs> with a Chinese buffet from Cincinnati. There's a site prank prankdial.com. You got me with that site, too. I ha I've, I've got a lot of people with that. But this one was fun because you, you actually get to enter in a phone number that appears on caller ID. So I put a Chinese buffet in Cincinnati, and it calls, and it has a little bit of an accent. So you answer the phone, and it says, it says you, are, you are basically banned from the Chinese buffet for eating too much food. That was a good one. Oh, my God. That call was terrifying. Wait, can I, I give one it. more? Yeah. I once used that on my parents. Sorry, Judy and Mike. Uh, it was um, an Indian IT company calling from India. <laughs> and my dad answers and he, yell, he yells, F you, because he was so ticked off at this. 
So then my parents called the police which traced it back to our, <laughs> our old office Wait, building. they called the cops. Yeah, and they asked uh, my mom if she wanted to press charges on me. <laughs> did she pursue? Factual, she did not. I, I actually wish she would have. If I would have been somehow arrested for <laughs> prank calling my mom, that would have been worth it. That's an epic story. Yeah, I got, I got tons of those. More, more later. Oh my God, okay. Sorry, I keep derailing this thing. It's, it's the sugar high. I don't, I don't eat m and M's. so. <laughs> All five M and M's that you were able to. I mean, I I feel well that it, plus coffee, so that'll do it. All right, well, our for inspiration then is coming from one of our legal players. Is it fair if we have for inspiration from a legal player and then list everyone else from the week as a friend liberty? I don't know. Are all of our viewers out there? What do you think? <laughs> and no one's commenting. And there's zero. So go ahead. <laughs> well, it's going to be in the newsletter too, which more cares? Go more for people it. read than zero. So you need to find an experienced franchise attorney that you can relate to on both a personal and professional level. You will spend a fair amount of time working together and the experience needs to be enjoyable even when you are dealing with intricate, intricate legal issues. I like that. Yeah. Who said that? That was Marissa Founts or Founce. I'm not sure yeah. exactly how to pronounce it. My pronunciation on these is horrible. I'm sorry, guys. I like that quote. I do too. I figured it was broad Look, enough and if she can't pronounce her last name, then there's no, there's no advantage to you. So you're, you're safe. You're Sorry, not going to pick up, you're not gonna get, pick up more readers anyway. You'll be linked just like everyone else. So it'll right, be very fair. fair. Good. Okay. For enemies versus friends, so McDonald's is actively taking steps to be a better friend to its employees. They're expanding their, um, what is it called? The Archways to Opportunity yeah, program. Like this. Yeah, so that more people can go through the program, um, which helps people get high school diplomas or upfront college tuition yeah. assistance. Well, I think it's a really cool move. So if, if this is connected back to some of the tax credits that came through, I, I, I like this. I like that businesses are paying it forward. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I know I'm not a politician. I know I'm not an e e economist. 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 Um, but look, if, if somehow magic government came to me and said, take all the tax dollars that you have and use it towards investing in your staff, great. Mm -hmm. And I think that would, that would uh, um, that'd put money back into the economy. So if this is a continuation of some of the money that a McDonald's got, I think it's great. And there's other brands. Checkers has a great program. Um, the, the, there's a bunch that do it well. So this time, McDonald's. I will allow you to be a friend. a friend. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching. Uh, got game ideas. Find <laughs> us in, uh, in Vegas. Find me in Vegas. Um, I will most likely be at uh, Gamblers Anonymous after I lost money. At, I, I really do get stressed out when I lose even, even 50 bucks. So I'm not a big gambler either. I like gambling. I, don't I like just it. hate losing. I'd rather spend my money on something concrete. Like Dairy Queen. Ice cream. Yep, that would be the name of it. See ya. Bye. <laughs>